We started. Okay. Hello. Oh. Is it on? It's live. It's live. For those of you who were a Cornish, you might hear what I'm playing on here. It's Helston floral dance music. There's a bit of a delay, so people will start joining around now. Lynn is definitely coming tonight. Is she cooking along? I don't know. Maybe Anne Palmer is watching. <laughs> Shirley says hi, Tamsin. All the way from Maryland. What's the weather like over there, Shirley? I don't know if you can see out here, but it's like autumn. Very miserable. It's miserable. It's been wet all day. It's cold. Very, a very old British summer at the moment. And we're planning on going camping at the weekend, so we're hoping it's going to improve. I hope you were out and about a bit over in America, able to get out and about, see Alicia and Mike. Starting like a minute. That's a two part thing I'm doing tonight, ladies. Two recipes. Uh, Jenny Furman. Jennifer Jen Furman. Oh, hi, yeah. Jen. Have you heard this Cornish music playing, Jen? I think Andy Phillips will be proud of uh, what I'm going to be doing tonight, Jen. It's a proper Cornish recipe. Cool. Do you want to okay. get started? Yeah. Well, welcome. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Winchcombe on this um, July evening. You'd expect it to be bright and sunny, but as you can see, it's a bit wet and rainy, but that's okay. It's good for the garden. Uh, tonight, I'm doing two recipes. Um, I gave out the recipe for some jam earlier in the week, so some people might hope, hopefully maybe cook along uh, with some jam this evening. But I'm also making uh, a Cornish recipe and I'm making Cornish splits. It's a bread recipe uh, and before scones came on the scene in Cornwall that was what a cream tea was. It was a Cornish split which was a bread, uh, a sort of a sweet milky soft bread roll and then you put some lovely homemade jam and of course clotted cream in the split. So that's what I'm going to be showing you this evening. Uh, first, of course, we're going to have get the jam on the go for those that want to join in. So I'm going to come round and uh, show you the rest of the, the ingredients for the jam. Okay, so we have here uh, 100 grams of raspberries and 100 grams of strawberries. And they are going to go into a small pan. So... In go the raspberries. This is um, it's just a small quantity of jam. I thought sometimes when you um, make jam, it gets a bit overwhelming. People say, "Oh yes, we need you know six pounds of this and seven pounds of sugar," and it's a massive pan and it's a lot of spitting and sticky mess and lots of jars. And I thought actually making jam is not difficult. And I wanted to show that you could just make a small amount uh, with, um, with ease, really. 
and you can use it then for toast or just make maybe if you want you've done it once and you've got your confidence you can then make a larger amount so this is a strawberry and raspberry jam so I've taken the hulls off the strawberries and um, any big ones I just cut them in two like that and then you put in 150 grams of granulated sugar there we go and then I'm going to put in a lemon so the reason that I'm putting in uh, the reason that I'm putting in <laughs> ooh, sorry, yes it on. seemed in yeah so the reason I'm putting in the lemon is because uh, jams need pectin to set uh, you can buy uh, sugar which is called jam sugar or sugar with pectin and that's fine you can use that if you want to but I just rather use something natural and a lemon is full of pectin so that is why I'm using a lemon so for this amount you just need one the juice of one small lemon like that so that goes in so there's no water in there no water at all just um, Uh, the lemon, the sugar, and the fruit. Okay, and you just mix that around like that. I don't know if you can see in there. Sorry, yeah. that better. Just mix it around very roughly like that. Could just go over there now. And then put it on a really low heat, the lowest heat, and you can just leave that for now until um, I come back to it in a minute. Okay. Do you want just a couple more messages? Are you? Oh yeah, able? lovely. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. uh, Shirley says that it's a uh, hot, hot, hot. Oh, it's a really uh, hot. Event. Rain expected tomorrow. AC is running and she's comfy. Uh, Lorraine says hello. Hi, Rain. Um, John Westcott's watching. Oh, hi, Granddad. Hi, Lynn, Dad. Lynn's here. Lovely. Making Cornish splits tonight, Lynn. Uh, Jenny, favorite, Jenny Swindle. Hi, Jenny. Jenny Vipont. Um. <laughs> Barbara Patterson, Hi, Bab. Jeff Hick, Lucy Elkins, oh, wow. and Liz Underwood. Hi Lucy, hi Liz, I hope Charlotte's feeling better. Hi Jeff. Great. Okay. Uh, Lucy says hello sweetheart from a rainy London. A rainy London too, fantastic. Oh well, it's raining everywhere in this country I think mean, tonight. Yeah. So, while the jam is very slowly uh, cooking there, and the reason I put it on a very low heat, by the way, if you just look in there, yep. the sugar that's there has to dissolve very gently. It's very important that the sugar dissolves before I start to boil the jam. So I'm just going to leave it there for a couple of minutes on a really, really low heat, and that will be fine like that, and it will, the, the sugar will dissolve. And then we'll come back to it in a minute. And I'm just going to show you the ingredients for the um, uh, for the splits. Now the um, oven needs to be set at 180 degrees. So I'll just quickly pop the oven on over here. Preheat the oven to 180 degrees. Some bread um, you put it on for a hotter, but these are small rolls, and so 180 degrees is absolutely fine. That's that. And then over here, okay, I'm going to use my uh, mixer for the bread. You don't need to. You can use the muscles and the hands that God gave you. Um, and I will show you how to knead by hand as well. But just for quickness tonight, I am going to use my mixer. Okay, for this recipe, you need strong, plain bread flour and plain flour. So it's not self-raising flour. It's strong plain bread flour and plain flour. So you've got 450 grams of strong bread flour and 115 grams of the plain. Okay, that's that all together. So that goes in. And then you need um, 85 grams of melted butter. That's, I've, I've melted that in the microwave and then I let it cool down. So it's not hot, it's just, just room temperature. That goes in. It all goes in. You don't need to worry about 
warming the liquid or anything, it's just all going in the mixer at the same time. Uh, one teaspoon of lovely Cornish sea salt, because this is a Cornish recipe. So one teaspoon of that, one teaspoon of sugar, and it goes. And then we've got two sachets, one, two, of dried yeast. Sometimes people um, get the yeast going first in the liquid. And that's fine if you want to do that, warming the, warming up the milk. But you're not for this recipe, you don't need to. You just snip the corners and tip the um, the grey yeast right in. Do make sure that your yeast is in date because it's one of those things that um, it doesn't behave very well once it has gone past its use by date. So other things aren't too bad, but yeast, I would make sure it's nice and um, you know in date. Um, and then the last thing that goes in is milk and that's 400 millilitres of milk that goes in. Again, that's just room temperature. I've not warmed it up or anything. So that's going in as well. So it's all in there together. And then I'm just gonna come round and pop that on the mixer. So you can see that that is very quick to get all those ingredients together. This is the dough hook for my mixer. If I put that on place. And uh, before I turn it on, I'm just going to go back to my jam so you can see oh, yeah. what it's like. I don't know if you can see, Guy, but it's the um, the sugar has all melted. There's no there's no grains left. It's all there's. I know there's a few there's a few grains around the outside of the saucepan, but there you go. The um, strawberries are staying whole. The raspberries have all mushed down, that's what it's supposed to do. And all the sugar has dissolved, okay? So now you can turn that up. We need to get that up to a lovely boil. Okay, we we'll leave it like that. Um, a few more messages, oh, yeah. a few more people watching. Uh, Shirley says, uh, say hi to Lucy from Alicia's mum. Oh yes, fantastic. Um, huh. Rosie Seamark's watching Hi, with, Rosie. with Phil. She says, uh, look at that sexy mixer. Sexy mixer, you're gonna get, get your splits in there. You're gonna get making some splits tomorrow, Rosie, with your lovely mixer. Uh, David Hick is watching. Hi, David. Uh, Sarah Morland. Oh, Sarah, hi there. Uh, Nikki says, hi, Tamsin and Guy. It all looks fabulous. Nikki. Harvey. Nikki Harvey. Oh, Duncan's here this evening. He's filming, filming me. He's filming Guy, filming me. <laughs> lovely. Okay, should I get going? Yeah, yeah, that's mixing? all, sorry, okay. yeah. So as you can see, the jam is now starting to bubble up. That's exactly how it should be. And I'm gonna put my little timer on, wherever that is. There it is. Um, I'm gonna put the timer on to about 15 minutes, okay? And the other thing that I've done that I forgot to tell you is I put a very small saucer um, in the fridge so that I can test the jam later. So I put a little sauce, a little plate, get it nice and cold, I put that in my fridge, okay? Right, now I'm gonna have a go at mix, showing you how to mix this. A little bit of noise. So as I said, you don't need to use a mixer, you can put this all in a bowl and bring it together with a spoon to begin with and then a knife and then use your hands. This dough needs to be lovely and wet. And sometimes, I'll show you what I mean. Right, let me just show you. Oops, hang on. Okay. Sometimes um, a dough, a uh, flour, Different, um, different flours can um, absorb a different amount of liquid. So you could put in 400 mils of milk and go, ooh, it's a bit dry and a bit stiff, and you don't want that. You want a lovely, loose, soft dough. If, you've got, if it's too stiff, it won't rise properly, okay? So I'm gonna show you now what this one looks like. If you can 
film in there. Can you see it's so being sticky? So I can tell that there is enough liquid in that. It's not every, all, it's absorbed all the flour really easily and it's soft and claggy and that is, that's great. So I'm gonna now give it another uh, knead with the mixer. Uh, yeah, yeah, very much. Actually, what I can do is the mix is a bit in the way. Yeah, I'll move on to here. Cool. Uh, a few more messages. Oh, thank you very much, Lorraine. She says, good, clear filming tonight, Guy, and very clear. Oh, good. Thanks, Lovely. Lorraine. That's good. We've, had, we've got a lot more light on the situation. Our friend Duncan is an expert, and he's said we need a lot more light. So um, we've, got, we've got some uh, funky lights going on. Okay, so this is the dough. And you just, use the, this is called the heel of your hand here, that's the heel. Push it forward and bring it in. Push it out, bring it in. Push it out, bring it in. And that is, is kneading really. You can be a bit rough with it if you want to. You can give it a quick slap if you want to. Nothing wrong with a quick slap. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically you're, stretching it and folding it and then if you look I'm going to stick my finger in it and can you see that it's it's actually it moves it doesn't it's it's coming back together again a little bit when I oh, that was press good. press my hand in and it means that there's there's life in there and it's ready it's lovely and smooth <laughs> and it's ready to um to prove, okay? So that's that's it really. So I'm gonna pop it back in in here. And I'm sure everybody's got one of these in their cupboard from a hotel. You don't need to use them, do we? But I do, I take them from hotels and I use them because they've got a lovely bit of elastic, they're ever so handy. And I pop that over my dough like that. And that, is uh, you just leave that now to rise and it can take if you put it somewhere warm it might take an hour but if you leave it somewhere which is just room temperature it might take an hour and a half but it will rise um this is um what i call a rich dough because it's got milk and um butter in it and so it will take longer than a normal bread recipe Especially sometimes you might have a Chelsea bun mixture which has got egg in it. And again, because it's a rich dough and it's got more heavy ingredients in it, it will take longer to rise. But I'm going to show you one that I made earlier so you can see that they do rise. So that one can go over here. What later. can you use if you don't have a shower cup lying around? Oh, just a bit of um, cling film or anything really over the top. Just to... What you want to do really is try and make a little, um, uh, what's the word? Vacuum. Greenhouse for it, you know, a little warm environment so that, that in there it's gonna get warm and there's no draft gonna get in. That's why I like the elastic, so that you're, you're creating a little tent of, of warmth in there for that bread, okay? Lynn does the exact same thing with the shower cup. Oh, perfect. And Lorraine says she loves the idea. Good, good, good. I was gonna quickly show you the jam again. Yep. If you give it a quick stir, Guy, that's good. That is how it should be. It's still bubbling away. My timer's still going. I have invested in a couple of really lovely non-stick saucepans, and I must say, they are a delight, because nothing is gonna stick to that. I know it's going, it's bubbling away lovely, and yeah, so 
a couple of really good quality non-stick saucepans will um, do you do you well. Okay, now um, I'm going to show you this one. So this one has been proving, this dough has been proving for an hour and a half. And when I put it in, obviously it was, oops, it was that size. And now it's doubled in size. Can you see that? Yeah. So it does work. <laughs> and um, my mum, when I was, uh, when we were little, um, my mum used to pack my sister and I off to Sunday school and she would make these, she would make splits. While we were at Sunday school, she was home baking. So there we go. Right, so now that you've got your lovely risen dough, the next job is to make them into rolls. And this amount makes 12 splits. And sadly enough, I've worked out that each one is 85 grams. Now, you've not got to make them all 85 grams if you don't want to, but if you're going to the trouble of making some beautiful Cornish splits, it would be nice for them all to be the same size. So that's what I do. So I'll just show you a couple. Um, if you take that amount, pop it on your scales, and it's, yeah, that's 88, whatever, 85, 86, you yeah, know, roughly, that's, and then you bring it round, stretch it out, bring it round, like that, and you make it, sort of bring the bottom in, like that, to make a, to make a circle, uh, a sphere, a circle. That's why I'm in reception. <laughs> That's about my level. It's a sphere, not a circle. Okay, and again, let's try and make 85 this time. 75. 81. There you go, 86. That's enough, that's near. And then you bring it out and round into a lovely you might, sphere. You might have to do that a bit slower. Oh, okay. Just for the next one, I don't know. Right, I'll do one more. One more. But this amount makes 12 anyway. So let's have a look. Uh, Eighty-three. There you go. Right. So put it between your palms and give it a bit of a go round like that to begin with. And then just sort of bring it around like that. So that all the little bits are tucked underneath. Does that make more sense? Do you want to go on, just show the underneath? Just so so underneath is sort of... So, yeah. You pinch it like that, you make the lovely ball, and then you put it on here. Now, uh, I think you can see on here that I've, I've made some before, and I have put them like that. So there's three, and then four along to make twelve. Don't put them too far apart because what you want to happen is for them, as they rise, to join slightly. You don't want them to be all separate. You want them to join up so that you can tear, you can sort of break them apart and they've got that soft bit in the middle. So don't have them too far apart. Have them like that. And when I've done all 12, I then make another tent. This time I've got a big uh, bin liner that I reuse. I don't know where that came from. It doesn't have to be a clear one, you can use a black bin liner. Uh, and again, so you put that in and you sort of tuck it underneath so that it's roomy, but again, there's no draft, there's no cold air gonna get in there. And um, put that somewhere warm or um, just on the worktop, it will rise. Uh, again, it won't take very, no, it won't take as long, by the way. This is like half an hour this time. And then once they're risen, they can go in the oven. Okay? Right, back to the jam. Let me just have a quickly show you what that looks like. Okay? So that will take another. Uh, where's the timer gone? Oh, I'm not. That's going to take another five, about another five minutes for that to be ready. But when, when it's ready, so just keep on bubbling that like that. What you have to do is get your uh, plate from the cold 
fridge and you test it to see if it's ready, whether it's going to set. So you get the cold, the hot jam hits the cold plate like that. It's not going to be quite ready yet, but that is what you do. And when you push it, you'll see a wrinkle. So at the moment, it's not quite ready. If you look, there's no wrinkle and it, it's, it's very soft. But when it's ready, you could be able to put your finger through it like that and it will leave a proper line. So at the moment, it's not quite ready. It's gonna take another five minutes for that to, to work. Let me put this on again. I'm gonna put this back in the fridge so it's lovely and cold again for next time. Back in the fridge. Okay. Now, so that is the, those are the rolls that obviously I'm not gonna do all 12, but that's what you do. And then they go in the oven at 180 degrees for 20 minutes. And then, I'm gonna show you what happened, how they come out when they're done. There you go. These are Cornish splits. I have dusted them with a bit of icing sugar and I'm gonna open one up and I've made the jam, by the way, I've made some more jam. So I'm gonna show you what the jam is gonna be like when you've made your jam. This is strawberry and raspberry jam. I hope you love the color of it, because I do. There's lumps of strawberry there, and you've got the raspberries, and it's beautifully set. Okay, so let me get a tray. <laughs> little tray and um, I'll get my knife oh and this is the most important thing of course this is clotted cream now I'm not sure whether you have this in America you should be importing it really surely because I think um, Americans would absolutely love clotted cream it is something that my grandmother and her mother and her mother would have made in Cornwall you put cream in, a, in, a, in the oven on a very, very low temperature overnight and it, create, it forms a crust. I don't know if you can see that crust. And that is what clotted cream is. Just, just hold it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So for the split, you split it open like that. And I don't know whether to put the cream on or the jam first. What do you think, boys? You can decide, Guy. On the corn tree, it's jam first, but... Jam first, yeah. right, okay. So put a bit of jam on. Like... That. Lorraine is uh, loving your buns. Oh, good. Thank you, Lorraine. And Shirley says, <laughs> we need to import very hard to find. Ah! Yeah. So they do, they do know it, do they? Um, I guess, yeah. Ah, okay. There's um, a company called Rodders in Cornwall, and they are basically the, the only people um, that make, well, I think other people do, but it's the most famous uh, clotted cream is Rodders. So there's the jam and the cream, and then you squish it down, and that is a Cornish split with homemade jam and clotted cream. Who's going to try it, boys? Dad. Ian? Should I go? <laughs> yeah, you might be. You might have his out. headphones on. Do you want to try the... Oh, oh here, here he, he is. Comes. Star of the Ian's show. Ian's coming. This is a traditional Cornish split. Lovely. Do you want a piece of kitchen roll? I don't think I'll need one. Okay. Drum roll. Uh, uh, Shirley from America is watching this. Shirley. <laughs> I'm having this for you, okay? <laughs> Buns away. Mm. Is it nice and soft? Soft and light and lovely. And how does the jam lovely. taste? <laughs> the jam's jammy. It's lovely. <laughs> really good, thank you. Okay, just quickly cheap. Back to the away. jam. Yeah. yeah, lovely. Back to the jam. As you can see, that's bubbling away. 
I would think actually that's probably just about ready now. But if it's not, you just need to bubble it for a couple more minutes until you get that wrinkle. Here, let's have a look. Let's have a look. See if it's where it's now. Hang on. Fingers crossed. No, I don't think so. Well. But it will. I'm just saying it will if you just keep on bubbling it away. Hang on. It's getting there. Not quite ready. But it will turn into, I promise, like I promise that your dough will rise like mine did, I promise you that your jam will set. Oh, there you go. So it will end up like, like that. Has anybody got any questions? Uh, well, there's just been lots of praise. Um, okay. Nikki Harvey says they look amazing. Are you, gonna, I'll, you can bring, I'll bring, so, I'll um, send some home with Duncan. Um, Lynn says uh, there's a family connection on the hick side with Rodders. Oh, is there? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, We're actually related to Rodders, I think. My mum used to say that there was a uh, connection there. Uh, Shirley says they look wonderful. Uh, she's definitely trying them. Good. Good, good. Um, do, you have, do you have strong plain bread flour? Do you know what that is? I'm sure, I'm hopefully, I'm sure they will. Lorraine says yeah. we'll definitely have a go at making them and the jam. Good. You need to get Mike to knead your um, buns for you, Lorraine. I'm sure he'd love to do that. Uh, John, uh, Grandad says that we used to keep the split open and have jam and cream on both sides. Oh, okay. So, a bit like a slider, is it? Do you want me to show you? Right, so you do that. Okay, and then you have a bit of jam first. Well, he said jam and cream, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's a, a ritual that Cornish yeah. people have on it. So you have, have it on both sides, okay. Like that. And then... Like that, like that, Dad, like that, hang on. And then, Whoop. there you go. I think that's what he means. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. I don't think it's a difficult thing to make. I think actually bread, people get a bit funny about bread. But really, it's not, it's not difficult. It does take a bit of time for it to rise. But if you've got a wet day like today, then actually it's a pleasure to do it. And you won't taste anything like that from a shop. That is proper, proper job, as they would say in Cornwall. Um... Um, I'm just going to look through my list. Oh, I know. The one thing I was going to say is that the other thing that people used to have on splits is something called thunder and lightning which was clotted cream and golden syrup. So that's something else you can put. If you don't like jam, you can have it, or you can't be bothered to make the jam, you can put um, clotted cream and uh, golden syrup, and that's called thunder and lightning. Okay, lots of love. Oh, oh. sorry, if you, uh, okay. Shirley says, yes, they can get strong flour. Perfect, that's um, good. Rosie Seamark says, Phil says, uh, best buns he's ever seen. <laughs> good, good. Um, I do think having a bit of icing sugar on the top is, um, is worth it, it just adds to it, and they look pretty as well. But the icing sugar goes on after you've brought them out of the oven. Oh, I, I did get it right. John says that Devon is the other way around. They put the cream and then the jam. Oh, perfect. But perfect. I think that makes more sense, I don't know. It might yeah. be a bit easier. Yeah. Shouldn't have said that. Uh, Emily's watching, <laughs> Emily and Hannah, uh, Hannah Tegg. Oh, hi Hannah. Uh, started, started watching. <laughs> Lovely, hi Emily. Mwah. Hopefully you're making a jam, you did say you were. <laughs> okay. Nice to see everybody. It's half past seven. I managed to do it in half an hour. And... Sorry? Share, make sure you... Oh yes, that's right, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yes, I was, I was gonna say, <laughs> could you possibly share the video so that lots more people see it? That would be fantastic. Thank you very much. Lots of love, see you in a fortnight. Bye.